Uh, hi, my name is Juan Nava. I'm a senior field engineer here at Intrepid. Today, I will be covering graphical panels. Normally, I give this training during our basics training course and our scripting course. But one thing that I normally get asked is how to create slightly more advanced graphical panels. So today, I wanted to cover the basics on how to create graphical panels, but also create some of the more advanced features. Uh, graphical panels in Vehicle Spot can be used to create more user-friendly uh, user interfaces, simplify or even uh, you know, filter down to just what you need in order to get your work done in a more uh, in a more timely manner or more efficient manner. So one thing I will begin with is the type of licensing that you need for Vehicle Spy. We do have uh, three main licenses, basic, Vehicle Spy Professional, and Enterprise. You will need Vehicle Spy Professional in order to, uh, to be able to do this. Vehicle Spy Enterprise will support this. So anything that's not basic will support uh, graphical panels. Uh, to get to graphical panels, we're gonna go to measurement. And then we're going to go off to graphical panels. This will be off the main menu once we're in Vehicle Spy. And at the bottom, we'll get a graph. A, uh, once we open up the uh, the tab for graphic panels, at the very bottom, we'll get a uh, a list of items that we can add to our graphical panel. Uh, some of the items that you could add to our graph to your graphical panels are LEDs, uh, labels, or in this case, are uh, text uh, text displays. We can add gauges, function block buttons, transmit button uh, buttons. And we have a slew of other things like bar graphs. We're going to be focusing on these LEDs, the uh, text uh, displays here. We're also going to be uh, focusing on this bar graph. And the other two items we'll heavily be using would be this image part, so to add images, and then this bitmap uh, switch. We're going to be uh, going over, over these, how to create, not just how to create a basic panel, but how to actually create the graphics to use to support some of these bitmaps that we can add to Vehicle Spy to really create some engaging panels. So it really how to take something from something real basic to something a little bit more graphically uh, pleasing. So we can take something that's, uh, you know, something basic and just maybe give it a lot more color, give it a wow factor, if you will. This is an example of a graphical panel that was added. This is one using is using the images part. So we can add bitmaps. So these are basically 3D bitmaps that were added. And these are using grid displays in the graphical panel. Uh, this is just another example of the uh, graphical panel. This is using the uh, the the text displays that are just encased in, in boxes. All, the, all these are really just uh, uh, text displays. These would be bar graphs and these are LEDs on the right on the right side over here. So some of the tools that we'll be using today for our, for our, for our graphical panel, of course, we'll be using Vehicle Spy. Uh, we're gonna be creating our graphics using PowerPoint. We're gonna be using PowerPoint to create our images and we can use uh, the basic chips that are in PowerPoint to create different uh, uh, images. Uh, the other thing we're going to be using is a stimping tool. In this specific case, I'm going to be using GreenShot. And uh, even though the stimping tool will work, I like the way GreenShot, where I can actually select the edges to get very consistent images. Now, we're just going to do one image. It's not necessarily a big deal to be able to use snipping tool. Where it becomes really important is when we want to do automate, you know, animations, where we need to take multiple screenshots uh, to be able to create that animation, where we need to very consistent sizes of the screenshots. Uh, the next one we're going to be using is uh, Paint in uh, in Windows, and this is how we're going to be taking those screenshots and converting them over to bitmaps. Uh, other things that you could use could be Photoshop, and the other one that could be used is uh, Keynote. Let's go ahead and go to our to Vehicle Spy. Uh, in Vehicle Spy, I have already created a couple of function blocks that we're going to be using today to to uh, synthesize some of the some of the uh, behaviors for the signals that we're going to be using, uh, and I'll show you the scripts as we go along on how I created those. So you can see how they were developed and you can leverage them if you, if you choose to. So to begin with, we're gonna open up Vehicle Spy, which I already have opened. The next part is I'm gonna to go to measurement and then graphical panel. And then this opens up this window here. Uh, this is our graph user, uh, this is where we're gonna be creating our graphical panel. By default, it's named panel one. And then down here, the panel one is, is uh, there. If I want to change this to something different, I can just go up here into this area, double click. And I can say, maybe this is HVAC, for example. Enter, and then the name down here changes. So as we add more of these tabs, we can have uh, uh, we can keep adding tabs to add different panels for different purposes. Maybe they're different subsystems, for example, or maybe they have different functionality. If I want to add another panel, I can simply click on this little page with a fold at the corner, and I can go ahead and click on add another panel. And by default, it'll give me panel two. So now if on the bottom right, we see a little lock, I can go ahead and click on that. And now I can switch between my, my panels. In this case, you can't tell the difference because I haven't done anything with them, but this is how we would uh, we would change between them. From here, I can right click and I can delete something. I can rename it if I want to down here as well. 
or I can do it from up here as well, uh, from the top right. Uh, this lock button on the bottom right is how we go from edit to, to an edit mode or lock the panel down. So if I click the panel, I can't edit the panel anymore. I can switch between panels, but I can't edit. However, if I click on the lock button, once again, I can go back to an edit mode and I can go back and change and add things to, to my graphical panels. So at the bottom, we have all our, our tools that we can add for our graphical panel. Let's begin by adding a simple LED. So this LED is I'm just gonna left click and release my left button. And then I'm gonna place, wherever I click next is where I'm gonna place my LED. So from here it gets placed. And then we see these four little uh, uh, dark blue boxes where we can go ahead and put our mouse over. And now we can expand our LED, make it bigger, but we can also take that same LED and reduce its size. Um, I can move it over if I need to. And then the other thing that I can do is that once I have the properties of these set up, I can copy and, and paste these as well. I can use my, my keyboard to use Control-C and Control-V. I can right-click, I can copy, and I can also right-click again, and then I can go ahead and paste this again. So if I have something, once I, I figure out the sizing that I want, the colors that I want, I can duplicate that over and over so I don't have to recreate it from scratch every single time. If I simply don't want it, I can highlight, click delete on my keyboard, and the, the, uh, the item goes away. Now, here, we can start changing properties of the background and the, the actual the different parts that we can add to our graphical panel. So if I click on my background, we see that this gives me a window of properties. If I click on the LED, this changes the properties on the right side and gives me properties that I can alter in that LED. If I go into like a meter right here, left click, release, and then click again, I can go and add a meter. And then from here, I can see that we change the properties. Uh, we have properties for this meter itself. Uh, how do we know what we have selected? Well, the boxes usually tell us what we have selected, but we can also look up here to see what was selected. So if I click meter, it says meter. If I click, click on the LED, it'll say LED. If I click on the background, it shows me that it's just a dialog. If I add a, uh, this caption or this text uh, display, it just says text display. Uh, so how do we change properties? So if I want to say the LED is I want to change the colors on it. So when it's on, it gives me the color, the LED color on. And so from here, I can go in here and say, I want to be green when it's on. And then maybe when I'm off, I want it to be maybe not red. And maybe I want it to blend into my background. So I can select the gray that's closer to the background. And it kind of blends it in. In this case, it's not a great blend in, but it, you know when it turns on, it would be a little bit brighter. Uh, it might be more obvious. However, if you want to create a lot more contrast, we can click on the background. And we can go ahead and change the properties of the background of the uh, of our actual graphical panel. So here I can change the, the background to be something darker. Uh, so in this case, I, I did a green, but maybe I wanted a gray, which is what I intended to select first. Okay, let's click that again. For some reason, my piece is a little slow. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and click on the box and go to a dark gray. If I want to do create even more contrast, of course, I can go to a black, and then we can create a lot more contrast. Sometimes it's just about easing, you know, the light that comes out uh, that makes it easier on your eyes. I personally like the like the dark gray and the black one. It just makes it easier on the eyes. However, if I put something like this, I can change the color when it's off to something black. It kind of blends it in a little bit better. Again, not perfect, but when this were to turn on and go green, it'll be more obvious that it turned on. Now, how do we take this and start mapping this to a signal that we can use? So. If I click on like the, the, the meter, we do have an option here for a signal. And from here, I can click on signal. And then I can select from my different databases that I might have added in to be able to look at, to see that data. So if I have a database loaded in like a uh, DBC or an XML, I would see the different CAN channels that I may have added in for that, that database. And from here, I can expand out and go select those specific messages or properties of a message or the individual signals that are in, inside those messages. If I have anything user defined, I can select in, in RX messages or TX uh, for things that are being transmitted from vehicle spy or something we're altering, perhaps maybe uh, we're just trying to load in one or two messages. We can define messages in our receive messages. Uh, today, we're gonna be using app signals. App signals are variables in vehicle spy. The way to look at app signals is that they're signals that we can use within vehicle spy to communicate within different parts of vehicle spy. So I can use it to connect, to communicate from one element, my graphical panel to another, or I can even communicate that to a signal that we're going to transmit. So I could use leverage that to, to do that. 
I can also leverage those to store states or information that I want to retain maybe you know, over the next couple of minutes. I don't want it to disappear. So I can retain like previous va values if I want to do any kind of comparisons. So for here, for this, for this specific meter, I'm going to select a value that I previously created. Uh, sorry, a uh, application signal that I previously created. And I'm going to use this count from 0 to 250. I'm going to double click so I can add it to my expression. And then I click OK. Now, when I go to the application signals where I define my signals, count is just defined as an analog value that I'm going to really be using between 0 and 250. I did create a function block to manipulate that value. If I go to my counter um, 0 to 250, here is a function block that I'm using. And this function block, all it does is creates a count between 0 and 250. And that's the first part where it counts up. Uh, I do have a flag that allows me to count down once this reaches the 250 mark. And that's this logic here. It'll flip the uh, the flag. And then the next part we'll do is it'll count down. And once the logic is reaches 0, the uh, flag gets uh, flipped again. And then it'll count uh, from 0 back up to 250. Now I'm doing this is just for uh, to be able to display the data that I'll be able to see this data on my graphical panel, make sure that when it goes to the full range, it's going to work properly. Uh, in some cases in simulation, we might use these function blocks to create a logic, or we might be able to map it straight to a signal that's already got that logic, like vehicle speed, for example, uh, or engine, uh, uh, the uh, revolutions for the engine, so the RPMs. So from here, I'm going to go back to my graphical panel. And I'm simply going to click on my device that I want to uh, add a signal to. And then from here, I can go to my uh, my signal. And I had already mapped it over to, to the count. So now, since I have my logic already up and running, I'm going to start Vehicle Spy. In this case, I'm going to run with simulation. And I'm going to click No Replay File, because I'm just going to leverage my function blocks. And from here, we have a script or a signal that is going to just go between the range of 0 to 250. Now, one thing in this, this this meter is that I do have a minimum and a maximum set. So because my value actually goes to 250, I need to increase this range to go to 250. So it gives me the full desired range. I can change the angle of this, of this uh, display. And I can go up to a value 180. Even if I put a value greater than 180, it's still going to max out at 180. If for some reason the color of the uh, needle doesn't suit me, or I just don't like it, or I want to maybe create a different, uh, I just want to make it look different, of course. I can take this red color, click on it, and I can change it over to maybe like an orange and click OK. And then I can expand this out to make the, you know, make this bigger. Now, this is uh, as simple as it gets. I mean, it's quite simple to just connect these signals over to, to, a, to, a, a, to a device. So from here, if I wanted to, uh, if you have OCD like I do, I can center all these. I can select multiple items by clicking Control on my keyboard and then clicking my, my uh, left button on my mouse and individually selecting them. What I want to do is I want to, if, now the next thing that we can do is now we can go ahead and select different multiple items and I can select the first one by click on it. And then I can click on control in my key, on my keyboard and select a different device. From here, I'm able to do uh, like alignments. So I can align the left sides of these. I can align the, uh, the centers of these. Whatever I select last, that's the properties that are going to win. So if I click on the LED, then I select my meter and then I select, you know, align to the left. Now the LED is the one that's going to move because I selected my meter last. Uh, so here, if I if I go in here and I select accidentally, in this case, middles, I'm just going to put them all over over each other. In this case, I'm just going to select the undo one time to go back to its original state. So here we see the uh, the meter going up and up back and forth, and all I have is really that's what it does. It goes back and forth. It waits two seconds at one end, reverses direction, sits there for two seconds, and then it goes back. And that's that function block that I showed you. Now for the LEDs, now in the LED, uh, you know, usually it's going to be used for something that's really on off, something that's zero or one, uh, but we can alter LEDs to behave differently. So if I wanted to just do a single LED and I wanted to map it to this count, for example, well, I can go into my signals here and then I can select the, uh, the count 250, but because it's an LED, it's a zero one. My, what I might want to do is I might want to add some logic to say whenever it's above 150, turn it on, otherwise turn it off. And I can click OK. So whenever this goes over the uh, 150 mark, it'll turn on. And once it goes below that, that threshold, it'll turn off. Now, that being said, 
I can add more LEDs from this specific, from this view. Uh, here we have the number of LEDs. So let's say if I want to do five, I can click enter. And we can see it creates five of them. And uh, we can change the behavior a little bit here uh, by selecting a different property, which is LED style. And now I can do like bar graph. Uh, so this one's going to be based on thresholds because we're given a range of 250. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to go back to the to the signal and really get rid of this logic because now it's no longer a zero or one. Now we're giving it a, a range. So we're going to see that it goes, uh, this should basically be turned into mod based on 50, uh, 50, but since I have a maximum, I have a minimum of zero with a maximum of 100, what I want to do is I want to change this value to 50. So basically every time there's a count of 50, in increments of 50, this will light up accordingly. So it becomes a, a bar graph, a very simplistic bar graph. So if I wanted to add more LEDs, I certainly can do that. I can do 10, for example, and increases the LEDs. I can make this bigger to make them bigger. And you can say that you can see that this is nicely spaced between all of them. If I wanted to do this with multiple LEDs, I would have to do each individual one. And then of course I would have to do some, some manual integration to, to get them to line up nicely. Here I can also change the shape. So here by default is circle. And now I can go to rectangle and change the way that looks. So now this is more of a more of a bar graph. If I wanted to be really granular, I can change this uh, LEDs to 250. And now you see it's just kind of just a bar graph. However, however, we do have a bar graph down here that we can leverage to uh, to do this. Now, one thing is that we can change the behavior a little bit. I can do cyclone. So basically, the value that it's on, this is where this is going to display. So now we change the behavior ever so slightly. So depending on what kind of look you're trying to achieve, you know, cyclone or maybe the uh, the bar graph is what's going to be appropriate. Binary is basically converting this value over to binary. Uh, so you can do either binary or reverse binary. So if you're trying to decode some bits, this could be a really nice effect. You know, visually could help you figure out what, what you're seeing. So let's change this to, uh, to bar graph. So now from a basic perspective, this is fairly, fairly straightforward on what we're doing here. Now, one thing I will note is that even though I think here is back, black, what I could do is I can change the background here to back to gray or a different color. So it helps me see what I have. Uh, it sometimes uh, seeing this in a different format helps us organize how we have this. So now that I have this, I'm gonna leave this as, as is. I'm not gonna change it anymore because this is great when we wanna do multiple states. Uh, if, if I wanted to use this as a bar graph, this is in my opinion, not the best choice for that I will use a bar graph, which is down here. So now I can map this to the same signal, which is the uh, count 0 to 250. Click OK. And now I can change the, uh, I can make these look about the same. So I can click on the first one and then control and then click on the second one. And now I can go down to this option here and I can make both these the same, the same height and width. And then I can also align these to be you know, left or center. So in this case, I want them to be, uh, I want the alignment to be centers. So here I have a, a range from zero from minus 100. I'm gonna put that to zero with a maximum of, of 100. So I want this to be 250. So now we should be able to see these pretty much be uh, identical. I can also change the color of the graph. So maybe I want something like an orange, for example, or green. And I'll have green to match up the, the top one. So. From uh, basic, this is, uh, you know, there isn't much more to this one. However, we can start adding this and changing colors on this. Now, this one gets a little trickier because we can't just do one, one bar graph and uh, and just change colors on it. We, we can't do that. But I can get rid of this caption because I don't want this signal there. And now what I can do is I can create this. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste it. And then this one, I'm going to change this color to red. I'm going to leave the one behind the same way. I'm going to leave it as a count of, uh, of 0 to 250. Restart this again. I think I accidentally clicked on something wrong. And so from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this, this minimum 
to 150. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this over this, this graph. And I'm going to actually, uh, I want these to kind of, kind of work together. So this one's going to get a little trickier to, to map these properly. And the trick to this one is I actually want to use a, a numerical input. This makes it a lot easier to align these two. And so this one I'm going to align, or I'm going to, uh, I'm going to map the signal out to the count 250. Double click to add it to the top, click OK. So here I'm going to stop the function block because I don't want this function block to do the work right now. Right now I want this to, to do the work for me. So now if I go into uh, to this input here, we see that the interval is 1 or 0 0.1. I want this interval to be, uh, let's go with one for now. I'm going to lock it. And I'm going to use this to, uh, I guess it helps if I put enter. Let's go with 10. And then from here, I'm going to go in, type in 10. And so now I can go here and leverage this, you know, to uh, get this to look just right. So I know that this will start in at 150. So now I can use this to uh, help me align these right here. So I want to make sure that they look they look good when I when I do this. So the alignment still looks a little bit off, not a lot, just a little ever so slightly. That looks about right. So now if I put this over this other graph. And I'm going to make these now the same height. So I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to select the first one, control, control on my keyboard, click the second one. And I want to make the uh, the same size, in this case, the height. And then the next one I want to do is I want to align the, uh, the centers. Oops. I want to align the middles. So now when I lock my screen, now I can see that it goes up and down. And that looks about right. So if I wanted to have multiple, three, you know, like a tricolor, I could do uh, three graphs on top of each other, or two, really one graph at the bottom and then two on top to be able to change between to change between colors. So I'm going to get rid of this uh, border style to none because it was showing that little line in the middle, and I didn't like that. So now I'm going to move this one. So this one is a uh, height of 82. Okay, height of 82. Because I see a little border there that I'm not liking. So we're going to get rid of this border now. None. And now we have a perfectly aligned item. So now this, I don't, I was just using this for to leverage this to make this, to make these look nicely over each other. So now I can delete this. I can go back to my function block, restart it again. Now we see that it changes all these colors. So now if I go back to my to my background and change this to black. You know, the, the, uh, the look, of course, looks a little bit different. So that's how you create, you know, now we start going from something basic to something a little bit more advanced. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this top piece now because I just want to keep the bottom piece. And now the next part is I want to start showing you how to create some graphics. So I'm going to start by creating a button. Uh, I'm going to create a, what I'm going to call a mood button. And this could be similar to how you would do power mode if you're doing any kind of simulation. And for that, we're going to go to, uh, we're going to start a PowerPoint. And then from here, I'm going to do, uh, basically, I'm going to start a blank presentation. From here, I'm going to close this part because I don't need the designer. I am going to be at 100% here on the right at the bottom. Um, I want to keep this very consistent. So when I copy these images, they're, uh, they're the size that I want. Now, what size is it that you need to do? That is very dependent on your screen size. You know, if I'm doing this on my laptop, am I using an external monitor? That's going to be very dependent on what I'm using. And so from here, the reason I like PowerPoint is because I can create things and center things very, very easily. So if I want to create a, this, I'm going to create a push button, like you have on, on the vehicles to start your vehicles nowadays. So I'm going to go shapes. I'm going to click a circle. I'm just going to put a circle in the middle. I'm going to click shift, and I'm going to drag the corner so I can, this expands uh, evenly. So now I can use the uh, the lines in PowerPoint to center this in in my in my view. Now I'm going to create one more circle, and in this case I'm going to do a I'm going to copy it, 
and paste it. I'm going to use my keyboard to do that. I'm going to click shift again, and I'm going to shrink this down. Down. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so I can create a two two items in the middle. So the first one, I'm going to right click. And I'm going to click format shape, so it opens up this properties on the right side. I'm going to click on fill, and I'm going to do a let's go with a solid color. Actually, I'm going to do a gradient color. And then I'm going to do, um, I kind of want it like a silver color. This is personal taste. I mean, what colors you pick, it's up to you. And I kind of want to duplicate kind of what it looks like in a car or in a vehicle. Uh, could be a truck too, right? Uh, so from here in the middle, uh, I'm going to click on the middle now, and I'm going to do a solid fill on this one. And I'm going to do black. And so from here, I can go ahead and put in my uh, my terminology. Uh, I can do like uh, power mode, for example, but I'm gonna do a change mood. So from here, if I want to change any anything here, I can change like the make it bold. If I wanted to make it a little bit bigger, I could. And so this creates a really, really basic switch. Now the background color that we use is gonna be dependent on what we're gonna be using here as a final back color. If we're going to be using black, we want to use black. If we want to use a dark gray, for example, I would do a dark gray. So in this case, I'm going to select, I want the background to stay black. Um, I'm going to get rid of this part right here for now. And uh, I'm going to go back to the black color. So now, since I have decided that I'm going to use black, I'm going to create a box around this to create the background in black. Uh, and I want the background to be black as well. So from here, I'm going to go to Insert, Shapes. I'm just going to click a box. I'm going to draw a box around this. I'm going to center this, though this one is not as critical that I center. If I can find the center. There we go. Now I'm going to send this to the back by right-clicking. I'm going to do Send to Back. And I'm going to do the fill in this one to be black as well. And so now I have my basic switch. So what we're going to be using for this is we're actually going to be using, we have uh, this bitmap switch here, which is bitmap button. And so this allows me to add a button and add an image to it. Now, I don't know if this is going to be the right size of this for the switch, but we're going to try at this moment. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a screen capture of this button. And I'm going to change the colors right now because I want to have two versions of the button when it's unpressed and when it's pressed. So now I'm going to use the screen capture. And this is why I liked the uh, this specific capture, because it gives me lines. And then I can do a very precise image cut of what I of, of what I want. So from here, if I want this just this image here, I can do that. Uh, if I want it to be a little bit more consistent, well, I'm, I might want to move this box down. Let me recreate this box. Something about it just doesn't seem right. And do square, shift, so I can get a nice square. Now I'm going to do send to the back. I'm going to do a uh, black background. Now, this is why I like the uh, screenshot. So when I go on to start my screenshot, I can see exactly where those lines, where I'm going to take the image of this is at. So I can see that there's a little blue border. I definitely don't want that blue border. So I'm going to do this line. I'm going to click no. And I'm going to do no for these as well. I don't want the line. Though sometimes a little contrast does look kind of nice. Uh, but in this case, I in this specific case, I don't I don't want it. So I'm going to take a screenshot again. And this again, this is why I like this because I can go very precisely here and see where these crosshairs are at to figure out where I'm going to take the image. If I'm going to take one image. A screenshot of one, it does not matter, but if I'm going to do more than one, which in this case I am, I want to use this to leverage that so I, I get very consistent images. So now I can let go. I'm going to copy to clipboard. I'm going to go to paint, and I'm going to, going to go ahead and paste that. I don't see any white edges around this, so that means whatever uh, got put in here looks uh, was, uh, perfectly sized. So from here, all I have to do is file, save as, and then I'm going to do bitmap. This is going to be a 24 uh, 
bit bitmap. Now we already created a bunch of these already in advance. But let's go to this one here and I'm gonna go and say it's uh, my start button or a mood button or uh, unpress. And I'm gonna click save. So I'm, go, go, I'm going to go back to my presentation and now this one, I'm gonna change the color. This time I'm gonna click a press, I'm gonna do a grading fill and I'm gonna do, I actually want a darker color and I'm gonna select some Go with zero here. Okay, that I'm liking that. That doesn't look too bad. So I just want to look like it actually got pressed. And so here, that's all I have. So that's all I need. So now I can go back to my screenshot. Again, in this case, I want to do a very, very unique. Or I'm sorry, the, the, oh, not a unique, but I want to capture the same exact size of the image. And now I can do a uh, copy to clipboard, go back to paint. I can do like a new, for example, and then I can paste it in. That looks pretty good to me already. And I can do a save as, bitmap. And now I'm going to do the, the uh, press version of this. And then click save. So now in Vehicle Spy, I can go in here. And I already selected this, this, uh, this button here. Let's do that one more time. And now we're going to select this, this uh, bitmap button. So now I can take this here. I can expand this a little bit better because I know the picture is going to be bigger than that size. And now on the right side, I can do image. And now I can add my series of images. Now, when we do a bitmap button, you're going to, you're required to have three images. One's going to be a, Basically, when it's off, another one when it's pressed, and then one is when it's uh, disabled. So I'm going to use the same image when I do disabled and when I do the uh, the state one. And then the state two will be the one, one that I want to see when it's pressed. And that's all I need to do. And I can click done, and it adds my image. Now here, if I wanted to see how this looks, uh, I can always go back to the background and change the color to see if there's anything that looks off that maybe I don't I maybe I don't want. So in this case, it actually looks pretty good. I want to make sure I don't expand that out enough so I get the full image without it being stretched or uh, shrunk down. I want it to look clean and crisp. So now I can go back to my my other color if I wanted to, and now we can see the uh, the button. So now if when I click on this lock, we can see how it looks when we have it on when it's pressed and when it's released. So now I have two images. Now this, I'm going to map over to a signal and I'm gonna click here, signal. And this specific one, I'm going to select the mood button. I'm going to double click. And then here, my mood button here, if I go into my, uh, my state, into my definition of the application signal, it's really just an unpressed press state. And then here for the function block, we're going to be using this for the what I call the start button, but it's really a mood button. And then this one's just going to this piece of logic is just going to wait for the, the button to be pressed. We're going to switch cycle between a couple of different states that we're going to be creating here, and then we're going to be turning on an LED, and then it's going to wait here till it's released. So I don't want to run this logic more than one time when it's pressed. So this keeps it from going through this logic when it's unpressed. And then the line at the bottom keeps it from moving through the logic until it's released. We only want to do this one time. So now if I go into my uh, my graphical panel here, now I can go ahead and add a set of LEDs. In this case, I'm going to add four LEDs. I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. And then this one, I'm going to map to our mood state. And I'm going to double click and I'm just going to map those two there. Uh, this is going to be a zero to, to three because it's only four states. I'm going to leave it as circle because that looks fine to me. So now if I lock this down, 
we should see something happening. So the LEDs, uh, it looked like they're mapped as binary. And I don't want binary. In this case, I want to do cyclone. Because I want this to kind of cycle through all these LEDs as it goes through. So if you want to think of this as a power mode, this could be a power mode where one's off, one's accessory, one's run, and maybe something else, engine, engine running. And so if I'm doing a kind of simulation, this is something I would do. But we can see that we can change the, the way this looks quite a bit. You know, it's not your standard little button here, which I could have done with this button here, uh, which will work perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with these. You know, I can go in here and change the colors on these and make them a lot more interesting. But this tends to be, you know, visually a little bit more appealing than this. And you can see this didn't take me very long. Uh, generally, this takes me a couple seconds, you know, to create one. A uh, couple pictures, obviously, maybe two minutes or so to create one. It wasn't it wasn't very hard to create this. Uh, once you get really going, I mean, you can probably create some of these in, you know, a minute or so. So not hard. Uh, really, the hardest thing is really coming up with the idea. And then once you get one or two done, you know, uh, done, it should be pretty easy easy to do after that. Now I'm going to add one more LED. I'm going to click an LED here. And this time I want to add an LED here to tell me that it's not in the first state. So here I'm going to click on my, my LED, click on the button down there. And now I want these to be, maybe I want to align these to the center so if, they, if that works out. Not because my this thing is too far left. So that's not going to work for this one because my box around this is too big. I would need to make this a little bit smaller. And it's already, I can see shrinking already. So maybe I'm just going to do this one manually. So this one I'm going to change over to a from circle to a rectangle. And then I'm going to map this to a mood LED. Click OK. So let's go ahead and see how that changes. So whenever it's in my first state, it's going to be off. And whenever it's not in my first state, it's going to be on. So this could be the equivalent of this being on. Uh, accessory run, you know, uh, crank request, for example. So now I'm going to add a title to these or a label on top. And if I change these, if I go to the um, caption, I can do like my, my states that I, I selected for this are sleepy. Let's go with a white color for the background. Okay, now I, I need to change the color in this because I'm already lost what I did. Is it actually taking my changes or not? I want yes, sleepy. And then I want to do the next state is going to be sad. And then happy. And then hungry. So now from here, I can go to font. And I can increase the size of this to something a little bit easier to see. I'll go back to properties. I'm going to just play a little bit with this to uh, add some separation. That looks pretty good. So now if I go back to my dark image or back dark background, we can see now we have states that are according to that. So if I go and lock this down, because I can't push on the button if I don't have a lockdown, I can now cycle through my, my states. So I can start, I start off at sleepy, I go to sad, then I go to happy, and then I go to hungry, and then back to sleepy again. So now we see that we have created a different type of, of display here than you would have done at, you know, by, by default. So here I can move things around. If I wanted to organize this a little bit different, I can use again, once again, this, this, uh, this text display. And now this one here, I'm gonna change the uh, border style to be a group box. I'm gonna change the foreground to be white. And now I can create a box around the items that are, that are grouping or that are, that are related to, to something. Now, this is really an organizational thing. How you organize things is really very subjective, but even the way all this looks is very subjective. My idea here is really to, to show you how to create some of these things from scratch so you can make things uh, look very, you know, very different, a lot more, more interesting. Uh, you know, again, how you, I kind of want to see where all of you take this, this these ideas to, because uh, I can see this being a, a great thing. A, a, just how to improve some of these things.
Okay, the next part now is I wanna show you how to improve the look of this meter. So I'm gonna move this, this graph down to the bottom. So with this one, we can remove some of the, the options here. So I'm gonna go from opaque to transparent. So it takes the color of the background. I'm gonna take this sunken border and I'm gonna do none. And now I basically got a, almost a needle. If I do one more option and change this foreground to black, it kind of disappears and now I just have a needle. Now I can leverage PowerPoint again to, uh, to uh, create a background. So I'm gonna do a uh, new, I'm gonna do blank. And in this case, I'm gonna do a couple circles. So I'm gonna start with a circle and I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna click my shift key one more time. And then I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. And this one I probably wanna do, if I can get this centered. I wanna do about four or five inches here. So this looks about right. Maybe I can even make it a little, just a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna center that. Now this one, I'm gonna create one more circle. So I'm gonna copy and paste the same one. And this one, I'm gonna do the shift key and I'm gonna reduce the size of this one. And I'm actually gonna put it towards the edge, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it in the middle. Let's go with a background. So the background, there's a couple of things we can do. So I can do a solid fill. I'm gonna go with gradient. And I'm gonna do a, what do I wanna do? So I wanna do a couple colors to see what we have. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here Tap in my colors or uh, select my colors. So I want this to be like an RPM. So I want the right, far right to be red. And then I want the initial part to be green. And then perhaps somewhere in the middle, I want this to be maybe an orange color. Now I'm gonna select this one here and I'm gonna click this little X so I can get rid of it. I'm gonna change this angle to zero. And then from here, I can play with the colors on how I want this gradient to show up. So I'm gonna move the yellow a little bit more towards the middle. I want a little bit more red. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna move this over to the left. The uh, one in the background, I'm actually gonna get rid of the, the line. I don't want the line. And on this one, I'm gonna do a solid fill with a black color. Now I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna insert a shape and I'm gonna do a black box once again. But this one, I only want it to be halfway through the box. So I'm gonna put this towards the back. I'm gonna change this to a black fill. I'm gonna get rid of the, the, the line. I'm gonna copy this, this box again. And this one, I want it to be over the, the bottom. And you can see now that I'm able to create what we're gonna use here for this, for this meter. So now I can take my, uh, my screenshot. In this case, it doesn't matter as much because it's, it's just one image, so I don't need to be perfect with this one. I don't need to be consistent because I'm only gonna take one screenshot. I'm gonna copy to clipboard. Here, I'm gonna go to new, paste. So now from here, I can do file and save, bitmap. And then from here, I'm gonna do a meter. I'm gonna call it meter one, save. So I'm gonna go back to my graphical panel and I'm gonna add, instead of the bottom this time, we're gonna add this, this little box here, which is this one here which allows me to add an image. So I know this image is gonna be bigger than this. And then from here, I'm going to go to images, double click, add or the plus, and I'm gonna to go to my default here and then select the meter. Open and done. So here I have a meter and I need to make it a little bigger. From here, I can get rid of the border by clicking none. And now I can put this towards the back, send this to the back. Now I'm gonna change the background so this becomes a little bit more obvious what I'm doing. And then we can see that the, uh, the original meter is still there. It's all there. Now, one thing you'll notice is that these lines are actually gonna be over, they're gonna be in this, this item here. So because there's count, I'm gonna go into this part and I'm going to go with the caption to say no. And then from here, I'm gonna try and align this here to my image here. So I'm making it bigger. And I'm just using my arrow keys to kind of align this. And then you're gonna see that there's the lines that came from the meter here. Now, if I really want to get rid of these, I can go back to this, this uh, area here. 
I can take an image, a capture from this one, superimpose it over here with like an opacity. And then I can draw little rectangles here if I really, really wanted to, where I can go with small rectangles here, for example. I can do uh, just that, do a black color. And I can kind of get rid of some of those lines so they kind of disappear in the middle. So instead of being the color that's in there, I select the color that's in there. So that's one way we can get rid of those if you want to spend that time for that, if, if it bothers you enough. To me, I kind of like it. Another thing that I could do is I can click on the image in the back, which sometimes can be a little pain to when you have things over. So from here, I can do uh, my graphical panel. Here's a transparency color. So what we're telling Vehicle Spy is that whatever color is in here, we want to kind of omit it. So if I go in here and I select black, all the black lines that are in there are going to disappear. So now if I go into my meter and then I send this to the back, you know, I just changed the, the, I got rid of those lines, but now I have these little edges that I have to deal with. So I can't really deal with it. I can't really change those. Those are, those are what they are. But when, when I go back to the black, it all kind of disappears. But the one thing I don't like is that the needle goes behind the color. And I don't actually like that. I actually prefer to have the needle in front. So I'm going to change this. Uh, I'm going to change this back to the magenta color that was previously. And then I'm going to send this back, send this to the back. Sorry, I'm going to send this one to the front because it's the meter. And so now we have meter with some blinds, which I am quite okay with this. If I didn't like this, I can change, I can make this change in my presentation. So I'm going to get rid of this line here. And what I could do, instead of doing a fill, I could say no fill. I'm going to do a gradient line. And then from here, I can do the same thing as I did before. I can do this, I can select the first part. I'm going to give it a green color. The second part, I'm going to give that a red color. The middle part, I'm going to do an orange. I'm going to select this one, delete it. I'm going to move some colors around. The next part I'm going to do is I'm going to increase this one. Maybe a four would look OK. Yeah, maybe five. So from here, I'm going to change this angle back to zero because I want this red on this side. I'm going to move this around a little bit to get the color consistency that I want or the shading that I want. So here's a green, yellowish, orange, and then the red. So now the next part here, the second circle that I created before, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do no fill. I'm going to do gradient. And I'm going to select the same colors as I did before. So first one is green. Second one is red. The third one's going to be orange. I'm going to get rid of this one here. And I'm going to try and line these colors to be to the top. I'm also going to make this line B5. And then the angle here is going to be 0. So now by moving these, I can try and match these colors up here the way they look. Looks about right. I mean, there's no perfect location. It's just what, what you think it should look like. And so now I have two lines that are over. So now I, uh, next to each other, I kind of want them to kind of merge in one location. So if I want to create something here, I can always take the uh, do insert, do a uh, shape. Let's do a line, and I can just draw a line across these points. I can say it's a solid color. I can say it's red, and I know that the size of this one was uh, five. So now it looks like uh, it doesn't reach the end. So I'm going to use my arrow keys to kind of move it around, and I'm going to duplicate the, the line. I could have probably stretched this out, but in my experience, it seems to take me longer to get that perfectly straight. Uh, so it's easier, I find it's easier just to create another line and just get, get to those edges. And so now, just like before, I take the screenshot. I can click a copy clip, clipboard. I can paste. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this up as a bitmap. And this one's gonna be meter So if I didn't like this one, I can go in here. I can go, uh, so in this case, it's my meter that's selected. I see the graphical part now. I can go to images here. I do want to remove the first one first. If I want to replace it, click the plus. 
And now I can add a completely different image and click done. So you can see that I just created two different images, very crisp colors. Uh, these black lines are again are from the uh, from from the other one. I would prefer to have these over than the needle behind it. Uh, that's a personal choice, uh, not necessarily a must. It's just the way I like to look at things. Okay, the next part I'm going to show you is how to create an animation. Uh, so I'm not going to go through the full way of creating an animation. So the animation that I'm going to create is basically this car moving to the left. Now, this is just really where I add a car, static image. And then from here, what I can do is I can go in and do this image where I do the exact image very precisely. And I want to copy it very exactly, you know, exact every time. Then from here, what I do is uh, I move the car, you know, a couple spaces to begin with. So it could be maybe from the original one, it would have been one, two, three, four, five to begin with. And then from here, I can do the draw. Uh, for the image that I selected, I ended up using this one right here. And I specifically selected this option here to create some smoke. So from here, I'm able to create, you know, some uh, like the wheels, uh, you know, spinning out, moves the traction. And then it's just a matter of a bunch of little still shots that I created to basically create uh, 23 images from start to the end. So to create an animation, it's just a series, really a series of pictures. So these images that we have here, we can actually we can actually map to a signal to be able to, to do something here. So if I select the actual image, so the graphical display, I can actually do a signal. Uh, and so that signal, if, if it's, uh, you can cycle through, through multiple Im images. So for this one, I actually have a car animation. Let me stop vehicle spy. And this one is really just, uh, it's, we're gonna create a button, uh, which we probably should do first. And then it's just gonna cycle through these images and then it's gonna reset back up. So the next part I'm gonna do before I do the, the, uh, the animation is actually I'm gonna create a button. And so from here, I'm gonna to go to create a new slide, empty. And then I'm gonna create a couple, use a couple of shapes. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a, uh, this rectangle with a, with a rounded edges. I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but I just want you to see the, the idea. And from here, I'm gonna add another box and I'm just gonna copy paste. And I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. And I can center that. So like the back one, I can do, uh, I can do, I can do a fill. Let's go with like a black color, for example. And then this one, I probably want a line. In this case, I want a white line. And I'm gonna insert a shape in the back. I'm going to center. Well, this specific one doesn't need to be centered, but uh, it's sent to the back. And that's just so I can see the image behind it, or I can see what, what I'm drawing. So I can see the like the white line, for example. And so the white line is still not thick enough. So I probably wanna do maybe three, three, three points. And then from here, I can change this to be a different color. So I can say maybe it's red. And then for a switch, I can take another shape and I can do a circle. In this case, I'm gonna do shift and I'm just gonna reduce the size of this. And now I can just change the position. So I can change the position when it's off versus on. Uh, from here, I can do, uh, let's go with a white insert. And then the outside, I want it to be black. And once again, I'm going to give it, I think this one, I want a little bit more separation between the colors. So maybe a three might be better. I, I want to see this little edge here, nice and crisp. And I can see now it's kind of going into the, to the edge. I can see that over here. So from here, I can go into my, my item here. I can do, a, this is off, for example. Uh, maybe that's, I don't know if that's going to be the right option to do, but I can do that. And now I have a basic button here. So now from here, I can go into the uh, solid color for the background. And I'll have a button. Uh, if I want to do it non, I would basically move this over and then create another image. So if I go into my images here, you can see I ha I've created two that are already uh, already in there. Okay, so these are the switches that I've just kind of was showing you here on how to do this. So from here, I can go to on.
So we can go here to move the switch over. And I see that I, I already over moved it. But now I can change, change the color in here to be green. Now I can take a screenshot of that. So basically these are just that. Create a couple of screenshots for, for on and off. So now I can go into my graphical panel here. I'm gonna use the bitmap button. And from here, I'm gonna expand this window out again. Uh, so for this one, I'm going to go to the, uh, to the images, to the image here. I'm gonna click the, uh, I'm gonna click my, my disabled one first, which is gonna be my off. And then my state one is gonna also be my off. And then I can click my, uh, my on and then click done. So now you see that I have a nice little, uh, nice clean switch that's very different than anybody else's. From here, I can give it a signal. And in this case, I'm just gonna do um, car animation button. Click okay. Now, if I want this, when there, whenever this is on, we have a value here. So whenever it's off, it's gonna be zero. But whenever it's on is whatever you type in here. In this case, I'm just gonna leave it as one. So if I go in here, I can click on it and we can see that it stays on and turns off. And that's because I need to change the behavior from a push button to a toggle. So now when I click on this, it'll stay on and stays off. Okay, so now how to add the actual animation. So I'm gonna put this here in the middle. And now I'm gonna add this image or the graphical display here. And now I'm gonna go into images plus, and then it's just a matter of adding all these different images that I previously created. So this one does take a little bit of time. It's not hard, but it is, uh, you know, it does take a couple minutes here. So let's go and add all of these. Okay, and I'm done. Click done. And now I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna get rid of the uh, border to, to do none. And then from here, I'm gonna map this over to uh, animation car image counter. And I'm just gonna map it in, click okay. So now I'm gonna lock this window. I'm gonna start vehicle spy. If I click on this button, it's gonna start my animation. And it just cycles through those images there. So what I have the the little function block do, or not the little function block, but what I have the function block do is that it starts the process. And then once it's done, it turns this off. So I can start this over and over as many times as I want to. I could map it over to be to a signal here. So I could say whenever this value is over 200, run this animation. I can certainly do that. Um, so we can map it over to different to different to different messages or different values at, a diff at, at different logic. So I can do that over and over. Uh, the next part I'm gonna show you is that I add a, uh, I'm gonna go back to this ABC and I'm gonna add a different kind of uh, numbers here. So from here, I'm gonna map this over to counter, uh, specifically the count zero to 250, click okay. And then from here, I'm gonna change the color to be this bluish color. The reason I bring this one up is because I wanted to show you that I can, I can actually change this over to like a digital display where it's segmented. So normally you're just gonna see numbers, but you know, this looks more digital. So if I want to put this over here, I could. So it's just a way to show things a little bit different. I actually wanted to show that before, but I completely forgot. So now I can go back to my, I can put a box around this. So I can put this button here. I can do my ABC, or I can just copy this one here. Control, control V. Uh, this one's named as caption. So I can name this to be uh, uh, my mood. Here I can name this to be something different. Could be a uh, animation.
So let's see if that box is sufficiently sized and it's not. Perfect. So now I have an animation that I created. I'm gonna move that over. I can cycle through my, my different moods. So now I'm sleepy. Uh, of course, I really like this animation because if I put this over to be automatic, you know, I can go to my function block here, for example. And I can go to the counter for, Let's go to car animation. So from here, instead of being uh, the on button here, I can do an and, or rather, sorry, a or, and I can do whenever this counter is greater than 100. Click OK, start my function block. So now we're gonna have, every time this is over 200, it's gonna go over, it's gonna restart my, anima my animation on its own. I can do manually or I can do it on Mac. So here I'm gonna go back to this and I'm going to cancel this one. I want this to be, not that one. I just want this to be based on the, uh, the bottom. There we go. Um, I got two more things that I want to cover, and then we'll be done. The uh, the last, the other one I want, want to do is the uh, like hazards. So we can do telltales as well. So just like before, we can add an image. So I'm going to use the uh, the images here, and I've already created some images that I use paint, and I just basically use the arrows up here to to create it. I could have done the same thing with the with PowerPoint just like I did before. And now uh, this one, I'm going to do the image. And for the for zero, I want a blank image. And then when it's on, I want to do like a left turn signal. Done. And then from here, I'm going to get rid of the border. I'm going to copy and paste it. Uh, in this case, I'm going to do actually, you know what? Before I do that, I want to get rid of this first. Go back to this one. I want to go ahead and map it to the uh, the hazards signal. Click OK. I'm going to copy and paste this so I don't have to do this twice. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the second image, leave the first image alone, and then I want the right one. Click done. So now I'm going to put this image here, put this one over here. And now I'm going to create this button again. I'm going to leverage this. And now I'm going to map it over to the to signal. I'm going to change the Car animation, I'm gonna do a hazards button here. Click okay. Now the uh, hazards is quite simple. It waits for the button to be on and it just kind of cycles between these two states uh, every 500 milliseconds. Once the switch is off, it turns them off. That's, that's it's pretty straightforward. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Well, probably helps if I turn vehicle spawn on. And now we see that the telltale's gone. So we can, we can have multiple telltales in one, or we can have one, and we can just cycle through them. So now I have a hazards. If I wanted to do a tag here instead of this caption, maybe I want to do something completely different, and I can do another image. Uh, this one I actually wrote up in, uh, I, I created this one in paint, and I just, it was my chicken scratch with, uh, with a mouse. So nothing fancy, nothing, no special font. It's just me and my, my great, my my great handwriting. So I'm going to click none, and now it's hazards. And now I can turn them off. I can turn it back on. I can turn on my animation. I can cycle through my moods, and I am getting hungry. Okay, the last piece I'm going to cover now is a uh, how to create a a graph or a bar graph, uh, basically uh, something over this one. So for that one, I had already previously created one. 
And it's basically just a couple of shapes that I created. So not, nothing different than before. Uh, just two rectangles over each other. Now this one has a line and I just took this in paint and then I got rid of this. Now the color here is kind of important. Uh, you don't have to use green. I, I happen to use green. And then I use the red inside of it because it's gonna help me hide some of the imperfections. Uh, because vehicle spy is actually going to turn is going to remove this color and then we're going to create transparency and then whatever's behind is going to come through so when i go into back to vehicle spy i'm going to add an image one more time and this time i'm going to click on a different image and that's this time is going to be this one here So by default, it's not transparent. And so this is where I'm going to leverage this piece right here. Sorry, I'm not clicking all the right stuff here momentarily. So let's move this over to the middle. And then not only that, I'm going to have to make these bigger or uh, taller. And so from here, I actually selected both. And I'm going to do the uh, the height to be maybe 150. And now I'm going to put this image over this. And now the color that I choose here, the transparent color, is what's going to be picked here to make transparent. So here I'm going to select the green. Uh, in this case, I don't have the green selected in here. I don't have the specific green. But if I go into, uh, into, power, uh, into PowerPoint, I'm going to go to format shape. From here, I can go to like the eyedropper, for example. Oops. So when I selected the eyedropper, it gives me the color here. So that color is kind of important. So these, those red 0, 176 are, are going to be things that are going to enter into vehicle spike to get that 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 uh, color to disappear. So now that I know that color, I can go now to vehicle spine. I can go to this transparent, this transparency color and then in here, and in here I'm just gonna type in those same values. So the red was red, was zero. The next one was 176. And then the last one was 80. I can add it to custom color here and then click okay. And now we see that now I have the graph behind me but the graph is still, the bar graph is still not big enough. So we're going to change this to be 200 perhaps. Let me get rid of the sunken part. And so now you have a graph, a bar graph that's completely different shaped, but still based off of the original one that I created. Uh, this case, I have the white in the background. If I don't want that, I can change the background to be something completely different, like a magenta. Uh, but in, th in this case, I think the white works maybe a little bit better. I can use maybe a black color. I don't know if you can see the little green from the, uh, that's not perfectly. And that's why some sometimes the colors that you pick here are gonna be kind of important to kind of help you hide some of that. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but, But again, that's really dependent on how you want to visualize your, your 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 tool. So here, I want this to be white. Now we can see the bar bar graph. So this is just really the these numbers again passing over. So if I don't want my hazards, I can turn them off. If I want to play my animation one more time, I can, and I can go through cycle through my my different moods. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with.